Do you want to model realistic line, side, shrubbery and weeds but don't want to pay a premium price for an off the shelf product? You are in the right place. In this short little video I will show you some really neat techniques I have learnt and adapted over the years using materials you more than likely have on your bench. Hi, I'm Darren from Model Railroad Techniques. Our YouTube channel produces how-to and product review videos for the modeler no matter their skill level. If you follow these simple little steps in this video you will make some really realistic weeds and shrubs. So let's get started. Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos, support us on Patreon, like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques. So the first product we're going to use is Woodland Scenics Field Grass. So it comes in various colours, I only have that sort of straw coloured one at this point in time but it comes in greens and browns. So all you do is, sorry, other products that we're going to be using are the knock leaves so I have various colors of those uh, greens reds and yellows and um, that's just sort of like sawdust from Woodland Scenics also um, you can get that in various colors so that's stage one the sort of the end product before we start uh, coloring it and putting a leaf on it so as you can see um, when you first make them, they be, do become a little bit one-dimensional. So what you need to do is sort of squish the bristles down a little bit and go from there. So the first thing I toyed around with is uh, a technique that I learned is you twist the fibers and then get some either PVA glue or even better uh, super glue or something similar that dries reasonably quickly. And you put it through the fibers and it locks them in place. So the next issue with keeping using this technique is obviously whilst the glue is drying you need to keep the, the twist in the fibre. So you can see there on the left hand side I've got like a forcep or homostat for uh, Todd and Brett Wiley out there. And also on the right hand side is just a bulldog clip, or sorry, a, um, an alligator clip. Now that's the, the glue I'm looking at using which is a zap which is a reasonably strong CA glue. So it's just a matter of in the middle of the twist just working some glue through and make sure it goes through all the fibers and going off so I did try various other ways to keeping the the, the twist together I use my second pair of hands with the the, uh, the clips on it and various other applications so I do see this is probably one issue with this technique is until that glue dry goes off you really you do run out of tools to keep the twist together So once the glue goes off, that's uh, sort of what you get. So you do get a little bit of wastage in the middle there. That's obviously quite long, so you, you then trim it down to the length you want it before adding your flocks and colorings. So this is probably my preferred method of bunching the fibers together. So you can see you just use very small rubber bands on a big bundle. So bear with me, um, this does work. So then what you do, you cut right on the edge of the, the rubber band which gives you a very, very tight, little, neat group. So then at this point, you just get some of your, your super tacky glue or other scenery medium and put it out on a card like I'm doing there. So at this point, you then grab one of the bunches and then you liberally dunk that end of the fibers into that lot of glue so just make sure you sort of even massage it in uh, make sure it goes through all the end of the fibers so the beauty of this technique is as what I'm about to show you so you can see there how the the fibers sort of all nicely bunch up now I could probably go to work that glue in a little bit better but rest assured this does work so you can see they come up in quite a large bunch so with that you can literally just get your scissors and then cut them up into smaller bunches to really dictate the size of the shrub or the weed that you're trying to do. So you can see there I'm just going to cut them. Uh, probably that little clump I could literally cut into about eight smaller pieces and they all relatively stay together. If they sort of start coming to pieces just have a little bit of uh, your tacky glue nearby and just add a little bit more glue to the clump. 
So the next part is now adding the, the leaves and the foliage. So this next step can get rather messy. So there's what we, we start with. So that's the me using the first technique, but uh, it's all relevant for the, the second technique of bunching all the fibers together. So it's just a matter of getting the, the size of what you want, um, squishing them down to get some sort of uh, three dimensions to it, and then just, of, just off camera there, apologies for that, is just cutting the sort of the, the, the straggly ends off the end of it so it makes it a little more uniformed once the fiber is ready uh, there's various ways you can do so I, I use a, a very light spray adhesive you could probably do watered down PVA glue you just got to be careful you don't put too much glue within uh, the the stalk area because it'll just clog up and look very very unrealistic you'll see a few that I've done there that uh, look terrible so I've got a little dish out there um, just purely to, to catch all the the leaf product because it is quite expensive um, but if you're sort of willing to catch it um, like I am there so it's just a matter of grabbing the color you want tilting the the stalk just a little bit forward and then just starting to just build that texture with the leaves on the various color you want. So that's uh, a green, it's a sort of a green, a dark green color, I think, from memory. Next step is adding, adding the, the flowers or um, the color to the top. So that literally is just colored sawdust. Now, whilst the glue is still a little bit wet, you can just literally dip the, lightly dip the top in it, and that gives you your your weed so that's obviously quite long but i still got a little bit of uh area at the bottom there i can cut that off before i plant it out in the layout so that is pretty well in short how you make those little weeds so there's various colors you can use um earlier in the video i think i showed you a like a poppy field purple color that i use um, it's just a matter of what you're trying to achieve in the area you're trying to model just to give you some sort of idea what it looks like here, I'm using the PK Poppy Field, which is the, the purpley color, purpley pink color. So it's just a matter of doing exactly the same. As you can see, I've already put the leaves on that one and then just dipping it in the top and you, you get your color. So you can see with that one there, I probably could have worked that a little bit more to get a bit more three dimensions to it. You can sort of see that's just a little bit flat, but once the glue dries, we can uh, remedy that. Now, I'm quickly going to show you how I make the sort of the biggest shrub small trees. Now, in Australia, that's a product we call that salt bush. So there's various other ways you can do this. You can use your super tree product um, for my friends in America. And also, I think there's uh, something similar called sagebrush or something similar to that that you could also use. So it's just a matter of grabbing a throng or part of that off and just sort of tidying up a little bit and getting rid of all the, the twigs that might turn internally. So as you can see, when you pull that off, that is rather one-dimensional. So what we're going to do now is just pull a few other bits off and glue more effectively armatures to that. So how I do that, I'll just grab a little pin vise, drill a little hole the size of the next piece of brush that I want to put in, shape it out a little bit with a knife to so it'll, so it'll fit in the hole and then it's just a matter of putting some CA glue and gluing it up and just holding it for a few seconds until the glue goes off. So I've done it on both sides now that's just a matter of so it just bulks it out so the next thing I'll use is the same glue or spray on glue I should say just give it a light coat and then we're going to get the leaf product in and just put it straight on there. Now this is not replicating how to build a tree in my part of the world, we have these ugly looking weed things that I wanted to try to model, which is the, the, the foliage is quite close and doesn't really bulk up around like a tree. That's really, um, I don't know the name of the weed. Um, so the color I'm gonna go in with is the, the same olive green as I used before. So I have since gone through and made various colors. So I'm just keeping it uh, sort of the one color scheme on this video at this point in time. So same as before, you sort of hold it over your dish and it's just a matter of working those into it so the reason I chose the olive green because it sort of depicts that it's uh, the sort of the the large shrub that's really just starting to 
in my part of the world sort of start dying off. So um, didn't put enough spray on glue there. So it's just a matter of I've added that and it's just pretty well you just go through, add the foliage uh, best you can uh, to get the covering that you want. So this is where the, the dish is quite important to, to catch all that leaf because um, obviously you can just then scoop that back in and just put it back into to the bag to, to reuse on another project. So that's the, the end of this video. So what I'll do, I'll leave you with some of the shrubs and weeds that I've put uh, planted in on my layout. So thanks for watching and make sure you watch my upcoming videos on how I've weathered a quite a large HO scale ship. Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon, like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques.